What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel for Webflow Pros. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create perfect page transitions easily in Webflow. We'll create page transitions that we don't have to apply to every link click one by one, or even to every page one by one on page load. We'll remove that pesky page flicker on page load caused from Webflow initial states, making our transitions easy to implement and work seamlessly. So let's get started. Our first step is to drag a div onto the page. I'm going to drag it inside my page wrapper and we need to give it a class of transition. And then what we'll do is set this to a position of fixed to cover the entire screen. So the width will be 100%, the height will be 100VH, and then we'll give it a high enough Z index so that way it's on top of our nav and everything else. In the designer, we're gonna keep this set at display none, but on the live site, the code's gonna change this to display block so we can see the transition on page load. Inside the transition, we can paste any content that we want to be seen. In this case, I have a div called transition content that's set to flexbox, it's set to 100% width and height of its parent. And inside that, I have a background color with a Lottie file that starts like this, and then it can be played out to kind of disappear like that. And then also a logo image right here. Inside the transition, transition itself, we need one more div, and we'll give this the class of transition trigger and set it to display none. Instead of applying a page load interaction to every page on our site or even a link click interaction to every link, we'll be able to use the first and second click on our transition trigger div to play the page load in and page load out interactions. The first click will have to set an interaction and call this one move transition out. Usually here, this is where we would select our transition and give it an initial state of display block so we can see it. But because these initial states just don't load fast enough in Webflow, causing that awkward page flicker, our solution is to not use any initial states. Instead, we'll set everything to look the way we want it to look on page load in the designer, with the exception of the main transition div, which will be set to display none so we can actually see our page content underneath and will be turned to display block with custom code. With our transition trigger selected, on our first click, we're creating this move transition out, which is gonna make this transition fade out when we load up the page. We'll start by selecting our logo image here, and we'll create a step for opacity. This is gonna have a delay of 0.5, so it doesn't happen instantly, and a duration of 0.3, so it fades out pretty quick. And we'll turn the opacity all the way down to zero. So when we press play, you'll see the logo's there, and then it fades out. We'll also create a move on our actual transition div itself. This is gonna have a delay of 0.8, so it waits till the logo's almost done fading out. It'll also have a duration of 0.8 and an easing of out court. Then we'll go ahead and move it out, negative 101%, to push it completely up and out of the way till we get something like this. At the same time, we wanna grab our transition Lottie and set a Lottie right here at the same time as the transition with the same 0.8 delay and then 0.8 duration and we'll play the Lottie out to 100% on its timeline. If we'd like to see what the Lottie looks like when it starts, we can also create a start point for the Lottie here that starts at zero, but has a duration of zero seconds. Since our Lottie is gonna start like this in the designer anyway, this is more so just for us to see how it looks inside the interaction panel. Now, if we play, we get this nice smooth fade out there. The last thing we need to do is select our transition div and set it to display none when the interaction's over, so that way it's out of the way and we can click on elements underneath. Now we can save this, and let's go ahead and create another interaction on second click. So we'll create this interaction and call it move transition in. This is for whenever we click on one of the links, we wanna bring the transition back in before we go to the next page. This interaction's gonna pick up where our last interaction left off. So since we just hid the transition, we need to show it again, so we'll go ahead and set it back to display block so we can see it. And since we moved it up and out of the way, we need to apply a move that moves it back down 0% where it started and gives it a delay of 0.5 so it doesn't happen instantly and a duration of 0.4 this time. And we'll do an easing of out sign. Then we can select our Lottie and then we'll go ahead and apply it here. That brings it back to the 0% mark so it fills up again gives it a duration of 0.4. And lastly, we'll select our logo, set its opacity here, give it a delay of 0.8, a duration of 0.3, and bring the opacity back up to 100%. And then we can save this. And let's set our transition to display none. Next, I'll leave the link to this custom code in the description of this video. Let's copy this first part, which is the CSS. We'll head over to our project, go to project settings. We'll head to the custom code tab, and we'll paste the CSS in the head code section here and hit save. 
Then we'll copy all our JavaScript here, head back over to our project, and paste it in the footer code section here, and hit save. You'll see it's finding our transition dash trigger div, so it can click on it. And then we have an intro duration here in milliseconds. The intro duration should match the time of this first click interaction here, which is 1.6 or 1600 milliseconds. So we'll plug in 1600 milliseconds here. With this value here, our page will wait until the intro transition is completely finished before it allows the user to scroll down. Next, we need to get the value of our transition trigger second click or move transition back in. This one is 0.8 or 800 milliseconds. So we can plug that here in our exit duration. This will wait 800 milliseconds before advancing the user to the next page so that we have enough time to see our transition come back in before going to the next page. I usually like to create a nice buffer here so that way we don't jump to the next page instantly as soon as the interaction's over, but we give it a little bit of breathing room. In this case, I'll even do 1200. Also, if we wanna use this transition on every page in our site, I like to put it inside a global symbol. That way, any changes I make to it on one page are updated on all pages. Also in this symbol, I usually keep my HTML embed and my nav bar. Then I'll go ahead and publish this to check it out. Now on the live site, we get our transition on page load. If we click, we get the transition in between pages as well with no flicker. This code doesn't run the page transition on any links that lead to a separate website on a different domain. It also won't run the page transition on any links that open in a new tab, no matter if they're to a different site or the same site. This way, when we visit our previous tab, we don't see just a full purple screen. Lastly, the transition won't run on any empty links, so that way if we have maybe a hamburger icon, it doesn't run whenever we click on one of those link blocks, or also any links that anchor us down to another section on the same page. If for some reason there's a link to another page on our website that opens in the same tab that we wouldn't like to have the page transition on, all we have to do is add the combo class of no-transition onto it, and the transition will get excluded. It's also important to remove the transition div from that page if you wouldn't like the intro transition either. Now clicking to the same page results in the intro and outro transition, but this page here gets no transition. This code also removes the Safari glitch where hitting the back button results in the previous page being loaded in its old state. With this code, when we visit a new page, if we go ahead and hit the back button, it's gonna reload the previous page instead of staying in its previous state. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to level up quickly in Webflow, check out our Wizards community on Patreon. As a wizard, you'll gain access to exclusive tutorials, twice monthly office hours, and a searchable tutorial database of all the tutorials I've ever done. You'll also be able to join our Slack community to ask other wizards questions and submit and vote on tutorial ideas. Usually around the first of the month is a great time to sign up, so I hope to see you there soon, and I'll catch you in the next video.